What's up guys, welcome back to Stoffer Garage. Today's detail is of my 2014 Mercedes CLA 45 AMG, which is just a big mouthful there. But today's video is your average detail that you guys can relate to, that you guys can follow along, follow the steps and the products that I use so that way you guys can get your car cleaned. Even though you guys like seeing those cars like Roach Motel, which, Sitting back there, have a few detailed videos planned for. Stick around, enjoy today's video. Leave a comment below of what type of car you guys own, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first step with any detail, obviously, is get everything out of the vehicle. This is everything from the glove box, the center console, underneath the seats, and the trunk. Get all of that removed from the vehicle. It always amazes me what you'll find when you remove the floor mats, especially like on a car you really don't think that dirty, but once you remove the floor mats and you start seeing that outline from where the floor mat cover the carpet, it gives you a better sense of exactly how much dirt is in the car. Now when it comes with vacuuming, I like to start in the back of the vehicle and kind of work my way up. So in this case, with it being a sedan, I'm starting in the trunk of the car. And I will say that Mercedes has this fiber that they use in the trunk, which makes it super, super difficult to get any dirt off of it or any sticks or pieces of twigs, anything, you name it. It's super difficult. So in this case, I'm using my standard nozzle for the vacuum, and then I'm using this harder bristle brush that kind of helps me to kind of scratch the surface with the vacuum in front of it. So it kind of it kind of sucks up all the debris as I'm brushing it off. But if I did not have a brush with this tool, it wouldn't have got 90% of this stuff off. It's something nice to have around if you deal with some of these carpets that are a little bit more difficult to get everything out of. Now that the vacuum is done, we're gonna start at the front passenger door. We're gonna be using our all-purpose cleaner and a soft bristle brush, and in this case, this is a boar's hair brush, which is very delicate and very soft, especially on some of these leather inserts that are on these door panels. The main goal with these brushes is you're trying to get into those different little creases and those different folds of your panels and inside the buttons where you typically wouldn't be able to get a towel into to kind of get that dirt agitated, get it moving, and get it off the surface so that way you can use your towel to wipe them clean. Now that we've cleaned the surface, we're gonna be using Chemical Guy Silk and Shine as the topper coat.
When I'm cleaning the interior, I like to use different color microfiber towels for different things. So in this case, I'm using a specific color for the all-purpose cleaner. I'm using another for the Chemical Guy Silk and Shine. And then I'm using one for actual cleaning of the windows. It kind of helps me keep track of which towel is which instead of using one color. So that way you're not cross-contaminating and maybe using like a topper coat on your windows, which is just going to leave a bunch of streaking and smears. For the door frames, I'm just using a quick detailer spray to lubricate the surface as I wipe away some of that dirt that's collected on that area. So now it's time to clean the leather seats and in this case I have perforated leather so because of that I'm trying not to use a ton of product but I also want to make sure that I'm able to agitate and get inside of each one of those perforations. So I'm using my boar's hair bristle brush which is very soft, very delicate and not overly abrasive and I'm using the Lexol cleaner and conditioner as well. So obviously you want to start with the cleaner put a little bit onto the brush itself and then agitate one of the sections at a time, complete that area, wipe it off, and then I'm following with my conditioner on a different brush to apply it in that same sequence. For leather seats, I would recommend doing this probably twice a year. I would say maybe once in spring and once before winter. That would be a good timing in terms of protecting your seats and making sure that they're ready for one for summer when it gets super hot and then also for winter. And that way you don't get any cracking or any deterioration during those seasonal changes. I would say this is the most tedious portion of this detail. This probably took over an hour to complete just because there was so much quantity of leather. And I could have gone a step above and done the door panel leather along with the dashboard, the steering wheel. There is quite a bit of leather in this car and I could have taken it to that next step, but I felt that it wasn't necessary. And actually using the Chemical Guys Silk and Shine as a topper coat for the leather on the dash and other portions of it were probably better suited because of the UV protection involved. I was actually really impressed with how well the Lexol products cleaned and then conditioned the seats. It actually brought that richness back to the leather that I forgot was there. Now for the dashboard and some of these tighter areas that are hard to reach with just a towel on your finger, I'm actually using these foam brushes that I'll have in the link in the description box below. They're really, really useful with just spraying the tip of them, using it to get inside the different dash vents itself to get the dust out of the air vents, but then also to get around a lot of these creases that you'll see me using it for here on the dashboard between each panel.
The nice thing about those foam applicators is they're actually super, super cheap. I think you can get like a 50 pack for 10 bucks off of Amazon. Um, they're super economical. And if you break one, you kind of just throw it away and move to the next one. But I usually use two or three on each detail. And they're super, super helpful with getting inside of air vents where there's a lot of dust that can build up that you typically can't get to with just a towel. Now for the floor mats, they're not super dirty and they are black, so they are going to hide a lot of the dirt and grime that you'll accumulate over winter and over summer. But in this case, I'm actually using the same method that I've used in all my other videos. I'm just using an all-purpose cleaner, spraying the surface, using my drill brush with my drill brush pads to agitate the surface, get that dirt moving, get those fibers releasing that dirt, and then I'm using my carpet extractor to just extract that dirt. For these floor mats, I'm actually using a white bristled scrub brush. These are actually very soft fibers. They're softer than the ones that I've used in the past in some of the more heavier detailed jobs because these floor mats, I didn't want to tear them up too bad, especially around the leathering, but I also wanted to make sure that they were enough to agitate, get some of that dirt out of them, and allowing the extractor to remove any dirt that might be in those white fibers. This trunk carpet was actually a pain in the butt and the fibers hold that dirt and hold that debris. So I actually just jumped right into using the drill brush and some all-purpose cleaner to try to get that stuff released before following up with the vacuum cleaner. So now that the floor mats are clean and deodorized, I want to do a deodorizing of the interior of the car. And this was something that you guys commented in the Roach Motel car that I did was to get an ozone generator off of Amazon. And this one in particular, I picked up for a hundred bucks to deodorize the inside of the car. And in this case, this one is very simple to use. You have a timer that you can set on it. But what you want to do is you want to set it into the center of your car, run the electrical cord out a door frame and set the timer for about 30 minutes and make sure you have the air conditioning unit turned on with the recirculation. So that way that the ozone is being sucked in through the recirc, pumped through the air vents, and then back and around the vehicle itself. After the ozone generator is done with its 30 minutes, go ahead and unplug it and let the doors stay closed, the windows stay up, and just let that car sit there for another 30 minutes or so. So you're looking at about a 60 minute time frame. But once that time frame's done, roll down the windows, open the doors, I, in this case, I'm using a fan to blow fresh air through the car itself, and I completely remove the cigar smell that's been lingering for the last two years. So I'm super excited to use it in the Roach Motel car to see if I can get rid of that horrid smell that's still lingering and completely deodorize and kill any bacteria that might be in the door frames, door vents, or any of the panels itself. So I hope you guys enjoy these before and after shots. Like I said, this car wasn't super dirty, but the dirt and dust that was in it was actually hindering the car from looking as good as it should be, which you guys can follow all these steps to do the exact same thing with your car as well. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below of what type of car you guys own, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks guys.